all the craziness, all the confusion in the first series of pictures. I'm not trying to freak people out. I'm trying to say we're going through a... Hi everyone, it is I, Gary Schumacher. Welcome to Exposing False Prophets, a channel of Christian commentary where false prophets and false doctrine will be exposed. But first, I'd like you to check this out. Hey everybody, I'm back. It is I, Gary Schumacher. I apologize to everybody for my uh, my, my not sitting out a heretic hump day this week, but, uh, you know, life got in the way. So, um, first of all, I'd like to ask you all to like and subscribe, uh, to my channel. And, uh, also if you'd like to support this channel, um, I do have a PO box down here below. Um, it is Gary Schumacher PO box one, six, seven Howell, New Jersey, zero seven, seven, three, one. And I also have a cash app in the description. If you'd like to donate that way, it's, uh, that's quick and easy and painless. And uh, because I'm, you know, I'm, I'm taking collections to try to get back out on the road and, you know, get in front of these, uh, these false prophets where they live and, and breed and make money uh, at these conventions with uh, Drew Bloom and Alabama Woodsman. If you're not familiar with Drew Bloom, Alabama Woodsman's channels, um, it is Drew Blue 34 and Alabama Woodsman, uh, respectively. <laughs> All right, with that said, let's get to it. I have today a guy named Gary L. Wimmer. Now, Gary, not to be confused with myself, of course, um, is a uh, guy who is in his 70s now, I believe. I'll show you a picture of him real quick here. This is Gary, and as you can see behind him, he is plugging his books like any good false prophet should, right? That's in the, uh, I think that's in uh, False Prophet Class 101. It, maybe even intro. Plug book, plug book. So, or CDs. Don't forget the CDs. You gotta get Sid Roth for the CDs. Now, Gary was hit by a vehicle either walking or in a, in a vehicle himself back in 1977. And uh, he is, this story is out there. And uh, so I will just cut on over to Gary right now and let him tell him yourself. This happened when I was 29, 1977. I uh, was traveling a lot in a band, had to take some time off the road, quit the band. What a shock. Uh, but that evening when I went back to my apartment, a little duplex with my roommates, uh, within about an hour of talking, I started feeling what other people were going to ask and say. I went to sleep that night or tried to. I couldn't sleep at all. My mind was racing like never before. My roommate came walking in reading the morning newspaper and I saw the headlines through his eyes. I walked down to the store about a couple hours later and everybody I passed on the sidewalk, I could feel what they were thinking about. Unsolicited. It was. Okay. Okay. So right there, <clears throat> even before. He got hit by the vehicle. He just woke up one morning and all of a sudden he could read people's minds and, you know, and all kinds of craziness. So it wasn't just a near-death experience. Um, this is 1977 after all, you know, the, the, the drug culture was in full swing and he even says, he goes, he was in a band. So, uh, but I digress. Let's get, let's get back to our boy here. <laughs> Or, uh, but at the same time, I felt this protection. I felt these guardian angels. I felt something was watching over me. They seemed to name themselves the monitors. I never saw them <laughs> except one time, which I'll explain. But I kept feeling them. Then all of a sudden, as I felt this real warmth around me, just millisecond, what? I opened my eyes, and there's this huge light shining down on me. It looked like a spotlight. And I thought, wow, if I had a, a ladder, I could touch it. It's six feet up above me. It was physical. I could see it. And I looked around at all these people watching me, and none of them acknowledged this huge light coming down. I couldn't understand it, but I didn't care. I looked back up at the light. Then it appeared as a crystal table about this thick. And as I looked through it, I saw these palms of these seven monitors, these seven beings, 
looking down at me and those lights coming down through their hands and I was just amazed. Fear had just instantly vaporized. They were in white robes. Their faces kind of looked like gray, like they weren't male or female, as if to say our faces don't matter. <laughs> it's our presence. And they said, do you trust us? I said, well, of course. I mean, you, you're the monitors. You're the guys I've been feeling for. Yes, do you trust us? Yeah, but I don't understand what's going on. Do you trust us? One voice, seven of them. Pedestrians and people who had been watching me or watching me talk to something as far as they concerned ain't there. It was the most real thing I've ever seen. Oh, yeah. So here's a guy he's standing in the middle of the street, 1977, you know, beard and hippied out and everything like that, staring up to the street, up in the air, talking. Not a rare occurrence in 1977, actually. And uh, so, yes, he's not meeting with God. He's meeting with seven angels. They call themselves the monitors um, and asking them, do you trust me? Well, it's it gets even weirder after this because, I mean, even prior to this, he's already having, you know, these ESP experiences and things like that. But like I said, I digress. Let's let's get back to old Gar. A second or two. I was involved in a head-on collision with the speeding car. Bam, got hit, tumbling over the car. All of a sudden, I'm outside my body. And I'm watching it get tumbled over the, by the car, but I felt this certain sort of detachment, almost humor. Well, if that's me, that's just what goes on in life. And I'm This guy don't look like he's believing him at all. The car <laughs> in all directions, like a balloon, not like an arrow. But like a balloon. I saw an accident. I saw the whole city of Austin, Texas, a little dot. I saw the whole earth contract with inside me. Okay, I got to get back to this. So, so yeah, so he's standing on the street. He gets hit by a car. There's another video where he's in a car. So his 72, five-year-old mind, I guess, can't remember things uh, that he uh, lied about years ago. And uh, so, yeah, that's where we're at with him. So he's standing, according to this version, he's standing in the street, looking up at these this light, talking to it. No one else could see that. I don't know how he knows no one else could see that. But, and we get struck by a car now. And he has an outer body experience where he leaves his body and the planet and the whole shebang. So this is like, yes, this is very Cat Kerr-esque. Excuse me one second. Mm-hmm. And um, the only thing he's missing is the pink hair. And uh, the, the other part that I found interesting is that these seven beings that he's standing in front of, the, he couldn't tell if they were male, male or female. Well, I, I, I guess we don't know what pronoun to assign them even back in 1977, right? <laughs> but again, I digress. Let's, let's get to, back to our hero who is being jettisoned off the planet through through time and space as we speak. Now my body's down there on Guadalupe Street. People are hollering, screaming, and freaking out. Planets, galaxies, it's expanding bigger and bigger and bigger. Went through the solar system, went through the whole universe, got to the edge of the universe. <laughs> went outside of it. And in the book, I describe what I felt like was a level of consciousness that I called the colors. It seemed to name itself that. It's a oh, I'm sure he was seeing colors. <laughs> level of consciousness that when we come in at birth, we go to this level of the colors that gives us the ability to use our natural human senses and brain to understand who we are and where we came from. We get to choose whether to do that or not. But I'm expanding beyond this. I went through the colors. I went to the edge of the universe. I felt like I was popped out of it. And it was a starry sky. And there's infinite universes. And that's the one I came out of. And then this whole infinite universe is rolled up kind of like a funnel of light. And it's really a good explanation. And I felt like I was shot through it. And came out on the other side. But by this time, I had no awareness of me. It was pure sensation. Awareness of me stopped about 
the time I saw my body tumbling over the car and started expanding. And I was, <laughs> I gotta love this guy interview. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. I'm, it's, it's a living <laughs> in this blue infinite void. that was unbelievably peaceful and beautiful. And it was infinite mind. And one. Okay. I got to stop it here for a second. So these people, especially the people that do out of body experiences, they always paint such a beautiful picture of bliss and everything like that. But this guy's a little bit different. Uh, well, of course, you know, they're all trying to plug their books, all the people with the out of body experience. If they weren't trying to plug a book or a CD, you wouldn't know anything about them or their story. So, but this, they always paint a beautiful picture. I mean, let, let, let me flip back over here for one second to show you this. Look how just serene and blue and beautiful that is. And that beam of light out there. I mean, they're always, always painting a picture. They want to suck you into their, to their delusion or fantasy or whatever's going on. And it's always, you're getting sucked through a tunnel. They're always getting sucked through a tunnel of light. <clears throat> and, um, you know, that's, they want to put you at ease that there's a higher power. And for some reason they're in the know and you're not. So you need to buy their book of CD. So I digress. Let's get back to our, our friend from 1977. That's what we need to do. Many, many things I realized, and this is the most important one. Infinite mind is completely unlimited. Nothing can constrain it, control it. It's all possibilities over all time and space, either manifested physically or not, but there's no limitation and there's nothing that can pose a limitation on. And it's completely unbiased. It has no bias and either it existed, which it does and everything exists or it wouldn't have existed and nothing would exist. He getting pretty deep now. <laughs> there's no in between either infinite or nothing. Guess which happened? Infinite. I feel like I was at one with it. It was the most beautiful experience. Seeing the creation, seeing different universes, seeing different free wills, wishes, hopes, plans, seeing the interconnectedness between thought, visualization, manifestation, free will, infinite time, infinite space. I could go on and on and on. It was not, it was like you just rock it. You just get it. You know, you just, you don't, doesn't have to be in English or anything. You just understand it because you're part of it. And all of a sudden I was, Maybe I'm not part of it. Maybe I'm observing it. And I was pulled back, back through this tunnel of light and back into this universe and started collapsing into the time and space. Had no idea who I was or where I was going, but I was a little apprehensive. <laughs> where I was was pretty nice. The closer I got to this solar system and then to earth, I started seeing all these flashcards, these pictures on spinning newspapers. They came in three series. The first series was what we're going through now. I saw 9-11, I saw COVID-19, I saw global warming. I saw, which I couldn't even imagine at that time, this carnage in the country. Nobody in 1977 walked around AK-47. Okay, okay. So here's another one, par for the course for all these near-death experiences. And now they're getting, they're getting visions of the future as newspaper headlines floating at them. I saw 9-11. I saw COVID-19. They're, they're all so amazing. After the fact, aren't they? What? And then, but, but if you ask this guy, what's ahead for the future? Oh, it's, oh, 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 oh. but boy, you know, when they talk, he talks about getting hit by a car and having a near-death experience in 1977. Man, they could, they could throw out. 9-11, they could throw out COVID-19. They could throw out any other major disaster that they saw before it happening. These people make me sick. If they are true, why didn't they warn anyone? Why didn't they warn anybody 9-11 is going to happen? Why didn't they say that COVID-19 was going to happen? At least give us a warning. They never do. They All they do is tell us what's going on after the fact. And... So, and what really, really irritates me is that there are people that buy into this because they're biblically 
illiterate, okay? And they, they're they just too lazy to read their Bibles and, and realize that this is not biblical. None of this is biblical. They just plucked this guy out of his rock band in 1977 and showed him, and not God, the seven monitors did this, plucked him out of obscurity to show him all these things, give him all these powers, and now... Uh, he from now from 2022, which why I'm recording this. I'm sorry, 2023, which I'm recording this video. Um, he can't seem to tell us anymore. But I digress. Let's get back to our boy here, our hero who predicted 9/11 and all the other catastrophes since 1977. I wonder if he even knew Elvis died that year. You know. All that I couldn't believe. I said, "No, that's got to be a hallucination." Nope, I'm not trying to freak people out. I'm <laughs> trying to say we're going through not a to big, people big out. change, and there's a reason for it. And that's it. I'm not trying to freak people out. That's my bad Bill Clinton impression. I could really do it better when I have a raspy voice like this. Um, but uh, yes, yeah, he's he's uh, it's, you know the bad thing about a Bill Clinton impression it's hard to get out of. Um, anyway. So he's not trying to freak people out. Uh, yeah, okay. That his, his whole objective is to freak people out. So he can go back and he can, uh, he can sell these little things behind him. The second in eternity. Sound like more than a second to me. And uh, the other book, something about reading stones. I can't really, uh, I can't really grab that one. But yes, he's, he's not trying to freak us out. He is just trying to uh, enlighten us all. I digress again. I saw this because I saw all the craziness, all the confusion in the first series of pictures. The second series of pictures were the thousand years of peace, exploring space, it's solving a lot. Of thousand years of peace, like what the Bible says will happen after the return of Christ. There are problems that we are headed that direction. It's a clumsy road. We got a long ways to go. That's idealized love, space, technology, no hatred. Where we are now is chaos. So there's a big gap. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta love this old codger. He, so he can predict 9-11, he can predict COVID-19, but right now we, you know, what's going on in the world is chaos and we have a long way to go. That's his prediction for our future. Okay, a little vague and generalized. Because he doesn't know the future. And in 1977, he thought, he probably thought Corona meant the beer he was drinking. Okay? This man is a fraud. A complete fraud. No different than any of the other ones. that are just out here to make a buck. But let's, let's get back because it, it always gets better. Where we are and where we're headed. The third set of pictures was about me. And then all, all of a sudden I see my It's all body, about you. And I jump back into my body, kind of like home. Well, it was the middle of a Guadalupe Street and people are screaming and hollering and the driver, the first thing I notice is long red hair hanging over my face. And this driver's leaning over me screaming, man, I tried to stop, I couldn't stop. I hope you're freaking out. Well, I just been to heaven and back. I, I felt no pain. No, nothing. I felt great. Although a little eerie. <laughs> I jumped to my feet. And he kept <laughs> trying to grab me and put me down and hold me. He said, you're in shock. No, I'm not in shock. You're hurt. No, I'm not hurt, you know. How do you know? I didn't want to explain. So I kind of shoved him away. Tried to ask these other people if they'd seen this. Monitors and everything. Everybody's not worried about that. They're worried about how the hell you got hit by a speeding car. And you jumped right to your feet and talking. Like nothing happened. And uh, within five minutes, I was going to go home. Okay, nobody's hurt. I'll just walk home. I heard the sirens and people saying, no, stay here till you talk to the police and the cops. And okay, yeah. So a couple minutes later, the police and cops and the ambulance came and asked me what happened. Boy, did that open a can of worms. As soon as I tried to explain why I wasn't hurt and what happened, they couldn't believe it at all. And of course, I wouldn't have either, you know, all 
all the witnesses saw was me talking to something, getting hit by a car, just jumping to my feet right after that and started talking to them like nothing happened. And I tried to explain to the cops and the ambulance and the, you know, well, they couldn't let me walk home. Like nobody could understand what I was saying and I wouldn't have believed me either, to be honest with you. Nobody could understand why, what he was saying because his drug hadn't worn off yet. <laughs> Whatever he's doing. So, to recap, he was hit by a speeding car, tumbled over it, went to heaven, came back, not injured in the slightest. His human physical body was not hurt in the slightest. Jumped back up, started babbling insanities to the people around him because they couldn't because he says himself I they couldn't understand what I was saying. So um, yeah, it's uh, it, it gets better. <laughs> it gets better. Uh, anyway, they took me to hospital, X-ray me. Really. Was, Hurt at all, no damage at all. There was a guy that walked in from the emergency room, and I knew him. I'd had premonitions about him. I knew his name, knew where he went to school. He was a psychiatrist. He starts asking me what happened. I start explaining it, and he goes, "He said I've heard about this. Never seen anybody that's going through this." I said, "You are now." Uh, he asked me a couple questions, and I. Explained him about some personal things with he and his son and rearranging the furniture last week and his wife not liking, liking the cutting down the floor space. He said, how did you know that? I said, I know everything. I knew his name. I knew. He knows everything. I was, I could tap it. <laughs> I, love, I know everything. <laughs> this I know everything. I try to tell my wife that she ain't buying it. Into <laughs> anything. The thing is, I couldn't turn it off. That's what had freaked me out. It was enjoyable, but it was too much. And so he fi finally said, look, we're going to have to commit you to a psychiatric hospital. <laughs> you know, what you're saying. Okay, okay, okay. So I have to, I have to come back. <laughs> so, so, so he gets hit by a car because he's standing out in the middle of the street in 1977, staring up at a big light that nobody else sees, gets hit by a car, Starts babbling insanities. According to him, he's not hurt. They take him to a hospital. He starts talking nonsense. And then, and then they, <laughs> they bring him into a psychiatric hospital. So let's, let's go with the things we can verify now. Crazy man standing in the middle of the street, looking at something that ain't there, gets hit by a car, winds up in a psychiatric hospital. Now He's selling books. Okay. <laughs> All right. Does it take a does it take a, a brain surgeon or a rocket scientist to understand what's actually happened here? Um, but let's let's get back to our hero. Saying what you do, what you act, you like, you know, we just can't let you just walk home, you know. And my attitude was sort of no problem. I, I don't care. I just been to heaven, man. I can't. I felt like these people were grounding agents. The cops, the police, ambulance, emergency room, put me in a 10 day mandatory commitment to a psychiatric hospital here. I didn't resist really? at all. Well, all the patients are calling me Mr. Smiles. I'm happy all the time. I'm playing piano for them. I'm entertaining. I spent 10 days there. And at the end of 10 days, the psychiatrist all get together. It's probably a drug rehab. They talk to me and they decide whether I'm going to have to stay another 10 days or I'm okay. 10 years. And I said, look, I know you folks don't believe what I went through, but I'm not changing my story. You're a psychiatrist. You ought to study this. Look at the record. I didn't even get a scratch. Didn't get hurt. Knew I wouldn't. If you can find a better theory than I got, I'm all ears. Why do you think that happened to you? It's a very good question. And uh, that's the one thing I did not know for a while. From the moment that happened to this day, there's no way I can deny what happened. But I did ask over and over and over, why me? Why me? Why me, universe? No complaints. The most beautiful experience anybody could ever have. Eight <laughs> months later, I was sitting out on my porch playing my guitar. Again, I'm asking why I got this beautiful experience. 
And all of a sudden, I felt these guides, the monitors, were near me. I didn't see them. But they shot a beam of light in my head like a <laughs> laser. And at the same time, they started speaking in that same one deep James Earl voice, low deep voice. <laughs> they started explaining. <laughs> oh, no. No, no, no. Darth Vader. Darth Vader came to see him. <laughs> James Earl Jones. Monot monotone voice. <laughs> You're killing me, dude. You're killing me. Oh, oh my. I'm sorry. I don't like to lose, especially when I'm losing my voice like this. But uh, I didn't. I didn't remember that James Earl Jones part of it. So yeah, so James Earl Jones came to visit him on his porch years later, <laughs> and uh, you know, explain to him why. Why universe? You know, he never uses the word God. Not once. He uses universe. He uses uh, these seven monitors. Never God. That way, if he keeps even God vague and generalized and replaces his voice with James Earl Jones, he could appeal to everyone. People who are Christian, non-Christian, you know, any sect well, can be sucked into this. He never mentions Jesus Christ as a savior, but he mentions a thousand years of peace, which is supposed to happen after Jesus, Jesus' return, um, which any Bible studying Christian would know that. Um, so he's trying to suck the Christian in with that. Um, you know, maybe the ignorant Christian, he's not sucking this one in. But yeah, boy, he is something, isn't he? He is a piece of work. Painting this at the same time I was reading it in my mind, like a uh, trailer at a movie, the end of a movie, the credits disappearing in the distance, you know, rolling up. And they basically said, you had this experience because you wanted it. You were always curious. You wanted to know. You asked. You were always learning. You were studying psychic ability, you know reading Edgar Casey, modern philosophy, you're doing everything you can to expand your knowledge. And so we took him. <laughs> so that's why they took him because he was study studying psychic abilities, which um, the Bible words you stay away from. And uh, Edgar Casey, by the way, this sleeping prophet, um, I've done some research on him as well. Um, Edgar Casey, which he did get quite a bit of things correct. He got more things wrong than he did get right. Um, Edgar Casey, according to him, was an illiterate, but if he slept with his head, on, uh, if he slept with a book under his pillow, he could uh, wake up the next morning and know everything, chapter and verse of every book in there. Edgar Casey um, uh, would, uh, like I said, he would call the sleeping prophet. He would go into a trance, uh, loose his collar and stuff like that. And uh, while he was in this trance, uh, he would give these prophecies to people, you know. And, um, but like I said, he's not a true prophet of God because he was wrong on many, many occasions. Anytime the History Channel or Discovery Channel, or whoever is doing a, a piece on Ever Edgar Casey, will never talk about his wrong prophecies, okay? Because there's a lot of his wrong prophecies, which maybe I should do a video on one day. Give me your, leave me your thoughts down in the comment section. And uh, man, you know what? I can't believe this guy did not make it as a rock star with a kisser like that. I mean, come on, ladies, really? I mean, was this man was? I mean, you just. I mean, I don't think he ever had hair. Uh, so, but yeah, back in the '70s, uh, man, he must have been in the cat's pajamas. And uh, he, <laughs> and I, it's amazing that the seven monitors didn't give him a, the, the phone number to a good dentist because boy, those those choppers, boy, they need some they need some help. They really do. But I guess when you're 72, who cares, right? You know, I, I still brush every day at 57 and go to the dentist. But <clears throat> anyway, I digress. Let's get back because this man does not disappoint. We showed you. We brought you back. You could handle the truth. Moral of the story, folks. <laughs> love, the, love the guy. <laughs> Period. 
ask and you shall receive. You don't get everything, but the more you ask and the more you... Oh, he just quoted scripture, folks. Get Stand back. You ask your God to help you, and the more you expand your consciousness and your... And you notice he said, ask your God to help you. Okay? Not Yahweh. Your uh, umbilical cord that we all have between ourselves and infinite mind. Everybody's got a unique one. But also, there's only one place we came from, infinite mind, and only one place to return to, infinite mind. Everything in between that is a experience in separateness in some form or another. So I feel like the luckiest person on the planet because of the experience and because they finally told me why I had it. Never occurred to me, curiosity. So people are going to ask, what are some images that you saw that haven't come true yet? I saw over the next hundred years, and there are so... You gotta love it. It's Now, here we go. Over the next hundred years, these type of people always do this. So, who's going to be here in the next hundred years? Not me, not you, not anyone. And if you are here in a hundred years, you're not going to be doing too well. <laughs> you're going to be in a nursing home somewhere with drool coming down you and you know they're changing your diapers and all that fun stuff and uh you're not going to be even thinking about this man and he knows it okay so let's start at the next hundred years shall we let's do that <clears throat> i saw so quickly that oftentimes i don't recognize them until i see the incident i can't lay out for certainty exactly okay so they're coming by so quickly at him that he doesn't even understand it until he actually sees the incident. Then why bother to tell him? What? How is this benefiting mankind? Oh, I don't know what I saw until it happens. And me too, pal. Me too. I don't understand what I saw until it happens. Okay? That is the entire human race. We don't see anything we saw until it happens. Oh, oh my, I, I, Alabama, I need, I need an aspirin. I, I do, I do. And when there was so much information so fast, we can't change the chaos the world's going through now. And the reason we're going through it, one simple reason. We all have to see the holes in the boat, the flaws in ourselves and in our systems before we can fix them. Okay, there it is. There's his prophecy right there. We all have to see the holes in the boat and fix them. That is so profound. He needed to be sucked up into the spirit realm to be so he could come back and tell us that. That's what's going to happen over the next hundred years. Get, get those holes in the boat fixed. We, we need it. Everyone has psychic ability? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So Absolutely. All the chaos we're going through, I really do encourage people to, A, not freak out. You know, the world is going through a big change. We're part of it. Don't freak out. <laughs> I should have counted how many times this guy said, don't freak out during this video. I mean, honestly, dude, you're killing me. And we all have a psychic ability, you know, not a prophetic gift but a psychic ability, which the Bible warns us about. This guy's a soothsayer. He's a, he's a mystic. He's into all this stuff. And he says that we all have it. Okay. Listen, if, um, if I had a psychic ability, then, um, I would be, uh, living in a mansion because I'd have this, the lottery numbers, uh, to become a, a millionaire. Okay. We don't have a psychic ability. This uh, being, a uh, so, you know, we're talking about the difference between a, a prophet of God and a woman who has a big eyeball in her window and you go in there and you give her uh, $50 to, to look over a crystal ball and tell you what's going to happen in your future. Um, <clears throat> or you go to the Psychic Friends Network on television and uh, <clears throat> you ask for that kind of entertainment. And it even says on the bottom of the screen, for entertainment purposes only. Is that what this guy is? This guy is for entertainment purposes only. If you want to be entertained, then buy his book or CD or whatever he's hawking. Because, but keep in mind, 
it's all fake. It's just like a Hollywood movie. And if you want to look at this guy as a Hollywood movie, then that's fine. You know what? I want to just take that little piece of lint off the top of his head. It's been driving me crazy since the whole video. If you, if you have it here, let me put it back here. See this? It's right here. Right there. I, he, he's got to, somebody please grab that before his next interview. <clears throat> Excuse me. So uh, anyway, I'm sorry. I digress. Let's let's get back to the uh, the fun, which is Gary L. Wimmer. Don't limit yourself on how much power and light you can bring to yourself as a protection. Ugh. But if you don't put a raincoat on and you walk outside, you're going to get wet. Mm. Right. One thing I definitely. If you don't put a raincoat on and you walk outside, you're going to get wet. <laughs> what? Man, this guy, he, he's just amazing with these, uh, these analogies, boy, I I, just, I don't know where he gets. I, I I never knew if you didn't put on a raincoat, walked out in the rain, you 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 uh, would get wet. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> Suggest to people is first of all, there's unlimited potential in our mind, soul, heart. There's no limit to how much we can grow spiritually and psychically and mentally. I became aware of that in a split second in 1977. I never even thought about it. But when I touched infinite mind and felt like I was there for infinity and came back to earth only a second later, <laughs> but so there he goes again. He, so again, notice he never talks about God. He says, when I touched infinite mind, when I touched infinite mind, okay. Now, when he talked to God, not when he, not that he saw Jesus, Although, and he's, he's like the perfect analogy. It's why I, I want to do a video on this guy because he, he won't even use the, the word God or Jesus or anything like that, but he'll sprinkle just a little bit of scripture in there, just enough to keep you, keep your, you wet your whistle. And then he goes back into this psychic stuff and, and all this. Having gone through one of the most incredible experiences ever. So yeah, I realized from that moment forward our power and our power, our psychic and spiritual and emotional power, we gain on it, we grow not to get a gold star from God, but to make stuff work better in life here now with us, with ourselves, with relationships. Example, 12 years ago, I was looking for my keys and an appointment, frantically going from one room to the next, pulling drawers out. And then I went, ah, this is nuts. This frantic searching is not going to find my keys. I've been at it for 10 minutes, no closer. So I thought, okay, higher mind, synapses in my brain, soul guides, y'all get together. Just kind of pull me to the key. Oh no, Holy oh, Spirit, no. Oh, activate. No. Holy Spirit, activate, activate, activate. Ooh. All right, let's go. So Did you hear that? Soul mind and all that. Find my keys. <laughs> find my keys. I can't find my keys. So I got to pull pull all the forces of the universe together to find my keys. And actually, he did say God there for, for a second. So uh, so uh, what God he's praying to, I have no idea. But uh, <laughs> he didn't ask God to find his keys, though. He asked <laughs> the, the minds of the universe to all... All get together and find his keys. It'd be a lot easier. It's a win-win. You know, this ain't working. You know, I didn't know if it would work or not, but I knew if I didn't try it and give it a shot, I'd never know, right? So I went from my office back into the kitchen, pour myself a cup of coffee, and oh. I looked over, and there's my damn keys. They, I put them on the microwave, I guess, and they fell off, and I picked them up. And as I've told other people, the first thing I felt when I picked them up is this the keys kind of said to me because I talked to my guides and I asked them to talk to me all the time <laughs> the keys said well Gary they, we can't walk but your system works oh can you believe that people can you believe this guy alright that's it I'm done with him we are done with him so um, yes you we none of us have ever lost our keys and then found them 
hiding from us in plain sight or anything for that matter. I, I want to, uh, this is about two weeks ago. I am looking all over my house for my watch, this watch on my wrist. Okay. I'm looking all over it. I, I can't stand to be at work without a wristwatch. I can't take it. Even though I got a big clock in my office, I don't care. I want my wristwatch on me. Okay. So I'm going nuts. I go, well, I'm going to be late for work. I got to get going here. So I go outside. I go to lock the door and uh, pull the door closed. And I go to lock it. And I look down and there's my watch on my wrist the whole time. And you know what? No, no spirits of the universe put that watch on my arm. Okay. I was just too stupid to look down and see that I had put my watch on already. I also do the same thing with my glasses. I wear my glasses up here sometimes, and I walk around the house going, oh, you, you guys are probably all weirded out about seeing me without my glasses. You're all blurry right now. But uh, where are my glasses? Honey, have you seen my glasses? Kids, you see daddy's glasses? <laughs> what? What's so funny? Stop fooling around. Where's daddy's glasses? On your head, daddy. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, there you are. Uh, so yes, and I'm pretty blind without them. So, um, yeah, so silly things like that happen. All right. And I didn't need the masters of the universe to find it. I needed my, uh, at the time, my 14 year old daughter to find them <clears throat> on top of my head and laugh at me about it, how silly I was. So yes, um, this guy is a buffoon, uh, just like the rest of them. But here again, these people are publishing books now. Okay. They're cranking out CDs. Blue Tap is a published author. If you're not familiar with our little spat that goes back and forth, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't buy her book if they were giving them away for free um, unless I needed some firewood uh, kindling. So, um, yes, steer clear of this person. Um, we, we really need to uh, pray for him um, and the people that follow him. Because the problem with him is that he, you know, and crazies like him, they, they draw a crowd, okay? And then the crowd starts to talk, well, he, he must be for real. And somehow that brainwashing becomes, you know, like an epidemic. Look at the people that Adolf Hitler packed into these rallies. While he spewed his hate and not narcissism and nonsense. And how many people looked the other way while they were hauling off the Jews to the concentration camps. Okay. This is brainwashing 101 at his best. And all these so-called psychics, false prophets, and so forth. They're all guilty of that. And they have huge amounts of followers huge and well like what I, I i told drew in alabama in one of my messages to them at, at, when they were out in san antonio i'm watching their videos as they're out there preaching the gospel the true doctrine of jesus christ bullhorning it to people and while they're doing it matt the masses walk by them into the building and i said to them that was the thing that bothered me the most when i was in minnesota with them as while we're out there and we're quoting scripture. So-called Christians are walking past us to go into this building and hear false doctrine and hear someone that says they're hearing from God while they sprinkle just a little bit of scripture in there, just enough to wet your tongue, you know? And they keep you hungering for more and they keep you wanting to hear from them and not from God. And if anyone has come across my video by happenstance that believes in these people like Robin Bullock, Kat Kerr, Amanda Grace, the, I could, the, the list is up my arm and they grow every single day. False teachers false that will only put out false doctrine to tickle the ears of the people that refuse to hear God's word. Please message me. Send a message to my P.O. box if you'd like to. Fellowship with me, okay? Because I 
can't stand to see anyone go down this dark path. Because one day you're going to have to answer to God why you followed this and didn't listen to scripture. He's going to turn around and tell you, I gave you this book. Why didn't you read it? Why did you listen to these people? Because in that book are warnings after warnings after warnings about people like that, people like this. I beg of you, if you're a Christian and you're tied up into this type of, you know, thing, please get out of it. Get back into your Bible because these people are just there to make merchandise of you. That's all they're there to do. Okay? The Bible says so. And, um, you know, we need to pray for those people. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to bow my head in prayer today. Heavenly Father, thank you for blessing us all with another day. And thank you for all your wonderful blessings. And I pray deeply today for people that follow this false scripture, this false doctrine. And I also pray for the people that put it out. They're doing such harm to the body of Christ. Some I don't know if some are delusional. I think some are just grifters. But they're taking advantage of us as Christians and Lord please give us the power of speech to talk to them and give you your give them your sound doctrine and help them understand that they're being taken advantage of because that path to salvation is narrow and I've seen the path to destruction, watching people, hundreds and hundreds, maybe even thousands, walk into these places. They are the masses, and we are the minority. And I've, you've opened my eyes, Lord, and I've seen it for myself in real time. And we really, truly need your supernatural help, Lord. We can't do it alone. So Lord, with that, I'm going to close by saying I love you and thank you for helping me on my path and bless everyone within the sound of my voice. And I pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I know I normally end my video with a prayer but I wanted to read this little bit of scripture before I leave um, it's John 14 7 peace I leave with you my peace I give to you not as the world gives do I give to you let not your heart be troubled neither let them be afraid so yes these false teachers, false prophets, as the Bible says, are nothing to fear. But I would fear if you don't get back into your Bibles. That's it. That's all I got to say tonight, folks. God bless you all. And I'll see you soon. Love you guys.